Whoa, 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 what do you know? The market is green and Meta Materials is green, just as we've been saying. So, the market's going to be good, we're going to be good. So, just hang in there during the wonkiness. We'll be looking at uh, some more overall market stuff here. That's what we do. Uh, basically, not much news as far as Meta Materials goes, but as you can see, 12% on the day. Love to see it. Just better overall market. We're way cheap as it is right now. Couldn't quite get over that 173 line. Uh, we'll have to see if this rally stays true. I expect kind of this week to be really good, and then maybe next week the fears come back leading up to the 10th and depending on how hot or cold hopefully cold inflation data inflation data comes out uh, on CPI data numbers uh, on Friday February 10th we'll be watching that closely if they come out to the downside that will be pretty bullish so here at the end of the video I'll be leaving y'all with some clips uh, fr from two of the Fed policymakers speaking uh, today. That's mainly what you're watching this week and why the, the market kind of reacted well today uh, with a little bit of dovish, dovishness and, more, and less hawkishness. Kind of Jerome Powell had a more hawkish tone uh, and now these people speaking right now are kind of calming the nerves it seems. So uh, I expect this week to kind of be good if people in people from the Fed keep continue to speak this way. Uh, if they come out with a more hawkish tone, once we get to the more hawkish members as well, we'll look at some rankings. Uh, and a lot of these are kind of more dovish people speaking right now, really watching for what those hawks have to say. So uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. But I, like I've been saying, I expect this week to be good. Uh, and then maybe fears come back and we'll see how that inflation data shakes out on the 10th. So uh, overall in the day, up 12%. Love to see it. The stock market was back rocking and rolling and we, we are well indeed. Uh, with these other 5,000 up in there in the green. So I do love to see it as we've kind of been predicting if the market comes back, uh, meta materials will be fine. The end of the day ended with some bullishness. So hopefully that continues on. Uh, if so, the shorts are really going to try to hammer us down and keep us under uh, $2. Uh, but we'll have to see once we get up to those levels if we're able to. So with enough buying pressure and all, all that good jazz, these levels will be easy easily to break through. So uh, 173, 180, and then probably about 190, and then up to your $2 the next levels I'm watching for uh, to the downside would be about your your 150s, 145s and, and onwards but uh, that would only come back if the market wonkies do come back because uh, as we know we've been at a pretty solid scaffolding for, could always get lower but uh, I think 150 is pretty pretty much as far as d down in the depths as meta materials want to go I know we've gotten lower than that but uh, things were getting pretty w rough last week so uh, if the rally continues, meta materials will be a part of that so what we have here here Wednesday early in the morning. Uh, the event starts at 3.30 a.m. Themus Kalos speaks twice. Uh, his first one is, is about 4.30 central time that is, so keep that in mind my time. Uh, and adjust accordingly and then he comes back ag again after I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to be because uh, these all have about the same little time span stamp here so about 4 30 to 6 a.m is ab about when we're going to be covering this event uh central time if y'all do want to come hang out should be a pretty interesting always love to hear the team talking about meta materials uh it's meta materials for industrial application so uh we'll see how that all goes of course not expecting no new prs or anything like that but there's always nice little tidbits that you can catch if you listen closely so uh, meta materials will be fine. One thing that I do want to touch on people asking uh, is this F FTDs and all that good jazz being covered. Possibly not going to speculate too much on that. The numbers as far as Ortex goes on the live. We know these top ones don't change for every two days, but uh, not much change on your live updates. One thing that I will say is the people who are going to start the small cap rally are going to be the shorts that have been just killing uh, the small caps since 2021 and now here in 2022. So of course, uh, if the amount, the, if the fears and all that good stuff go away, the shorts will be the first ones to start buying. Uh, I, I don't like to put to put any dates or any rules like that. My, in my opinion, the only time shorts are forced to cover uh, is when they're margin called or when they decide to. So uh, if all the fears can get out of the way, hopefully leading up to this first interest rate hike and even more so if inflation points to the downward side, as we'll look here in a bit, they say they're kind of going to judge those interest rate hikes off of how that inflation data comes up and can still kind of change uh, and maybe not be so uh, everyone pred predicting 7, 8 interest rate hikes. Probably unrealistic. So hopefully most of the fear is already pressed in uh, and we can get to rock and roll here. And as I was kind of saying, uh, the shorts will be the first ones to start the rally and start buying up the stock because they're like, well, our time is over, boys. Here comes the bull market. So uh, all in good times, those shorts will go long. And when that happens, my materials will be freaking bingo bingo bangerang so uh hang in there in the short term don't get swayed by your day-to-days even if we see some more wonkies uh there was a little bit of a sellout towards the end of the day but then quickly recovered so it looks pretty bullish as i kind of said uh 
look for for this week to probably be pretty bullish and then maybe fears start coming up leading up into the 10th and inflation data comes out high not going to be good uh but if it comes up to the downside maybe it could be some more bullishness leading up to that march 16th uh uh interest rate hike as well as more cpi data coming out on march 10th so here now we're going to be looking at some overall market stuff and going to be leaving y'all with some thoughts on all that good jazz so what we have here is a list of rankings of the fomc hawk and dove analysts uh we've had a couple Couple dove speak Kashkarian came out uh, and he is the dove of the dove uh, Mary Daly who I'm gonna leave some clips she first speaks about how they're not behind the curve the market kind of like that a lot and then she also talks about uh, being accommodative so just not extraordinarily accommodative not ripping away the entire punch bowl still here to party just here to clean up a little bit of the mess uh, so they're not looking away to take away the whole punch bowl as she says so uh, pretty dovish here and then as well as Rafael, Rafael Bostic he's a little bit more more towards your hawkish side he he is the self-proclaimed owl as they said in the interview here today but uh as far as that goes he came out and said that i guess in the past he talked about uh the the point five interest rate hike instead of the point two five and he they said is that your preferred uh uh first rate hike and he said that's definitely not his preferred and he's definitely data data depending and stuff like that uh, and then he also goes on and, and talks about how uh, if the inflation does point to the downside then it, it's probably good news for everybody and they will likely address those interest rates hikes and he's still only accounting for three interest rates hikes and there's a lot of analysts coming out and saying six seven eight and all that good stuff uh, mm -hmm. so the market is kind of more pressing in that so if we only have about two to three coming uh, that's probably already fully priced in so why I'm looking for uh, towards that CPI data so much is because if the inflation numbers start pointing to the downside, uh, then as both of these Fed members say, as I'll leave you with here in just a sec, uh, that if inflation is not as hot, then they will probably uh, take a little bit of a pause and continue to analyze the data before they have to do anything too drastic. So it's still likely, uh, as both of them say, that the policy changes and all that good stuff is underway and interest rate heights uh, coming in March as the first one. But basically the market got really fearful when Jay Powell still left on that 0.50 uh, interest rate hike on the table and Bostic a little bit of uh, t took it back a little bit today but we'll see how the rest of uh, the members come out. George also spoke a little, little bit today. Uh, Bostic and George both said that they could be pretty aggressive as far, far as reducing the balance sheet once that time did come. Uh, we'll be looking later on in the week for uh, all these other ones especially Bullard uh, Wallard and all these more hawkish tone people and see if they come out and try to uh, can put some more fear into the market so uh, market overall kind of reacted because uh, everyone speaking today had a more dovish overall tone as compared to old Jay Powell. So uh, as long as people don't kind of get shooketh out, then this week should be pretty good. And then as I kind of said, uh, I do expect these fears kind of still to ramp up leading up until the 10th. Uh, all up until if those numbers come out to the downside, then we should be rocking and rolling hopefully at least up until uh, most likely March CPI data as well. I'm sure fears will come up uh, and then also un unforeseen factors. So uh, Fed going to be very nimble here and if inflation points to the downside should be good news for everybody so basically uh i'll leave you there's there's probably about four minutes total it's two quotes from uh Mary Daly and Raphael Bostic so both of these two people in these interviews so uh, I will also leave the full interviews the the Bostic one is a, a whole YouTube live so if you just go to y Yahoo fin Finance live on YouTube you can find it there uh, and then as well as the Mary Daly one is a routers interview so I'll try to get those linked for you guys in the description but them being live they might kind of be taken down so uh, I will do my best to get those linked for y'all if not just kind of do some searching and all that good jazz so as long as everyone still has a pretty dovish tone the rest these fed members speaking throughout the week then the market should react well if they come out more hawkish it depends how the market takes it i still lean towards this week being relatively good uh also depending on those earnings and and stuff coming out uh this week as well we have google uh amazon A amd as well snapchat so uh keep an eye on those really looking for that 2022 guidance so but i'm really kind of leaning towards more people watching for uh what the fed people have to say but of course if a bunch of people come out and 
and miss on earnings and of course uh, not going to be good but I'm expecting beats and more so people looking forward towards that guidance and maybe people take kind of the the Apple way and not give a ton of guidance and say well we think it's going to get better <laughs> but uh, we will just have to see the market did act actually like that and kind of uh, they already proved that they could kind of beat it uh, in the these previous times of the supply chain supply chain constraints so uh, sorry I kind of murdered that so uh, hopefully all you guys enjoyed these little highlights from these people I know you actually like to hear it from uh, the actual people themselves and not just some Yahoo talking up here on the YouTube so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this market overall analyst I do enjoy bringing y'all the news but as I said uh, take a take a nice little screenshot of this this hawk and dove list uh, keep your eyes peeled for these interviews seem like Yahoo Finance had a pretty good uh, grip on them and then his routers as well so uh, if, if you're interested in watching that overall market stuff I I, I suggest saying tune into your uh, earnings and then as well as the the Fed speak week so we'll see how, how CPI data comes out that's kind of what I'm leaning for uh, towards when we can really officially say the market is on its way and hopefully for some big time short O coverage and some small caps so uh, as always you guys you got to do what you got to do uh, most likely a video coming up tomorrow and then for sure we'll be live early early in the morning so per use appreciate you and I will see you guys next time for my mind when you're trying to get an economy from extraordinary support to one that's going to just gradually put it onto a self-sustaining path you have to be data dependent as we we say but you also have to be gradual and not disruptive because we are not we are not behind the curve we are not behind the curve at all. We are just actually doing appropriate policy, getting ourselves to a point where we can weather COVID, continue to sustain the economy, but recognize that extraordinary support is no longer needed. So I do see rate increases in our future as early as March should the data cooperate. But from my vantage point, and this is perhaps your real question, do we need to adjust the policy rate? Absolutely. When you think about the SEP, I referenced it before the summary of economic projections, you know, the, the median was four, I think. So that's a 1.25 uh, interest rate at the end of 22. If you get to that point, so say that is the reality, you get to that point, that's quite a bit of tightening, but it's also quite a bit of accommodation left in the system because the terminal, you know, the neutral rate of interest is 2.5. So you still have, you're supporting the economy, now, pulling away the punch bowl completely and, and causing disruptions, but you're taking away some of the extraordinary accommodation that we've been providing. And I think that balance is the appropriate thing to do with the uncertainty we face. Perfect. Talking about the idea of the possibility of a 50 basis point hike uh, from the Fed, I, I guess I'm just wondering if you could kind of very quickly elaborate on whether or not you meant that's your preferred policy uh, setting for the next meeting in mid-March. Let me just say, first of all, that's not my preferred setting uh, of policy action for the, for the next meeting. Uh, really, what I, when I started looking at this year, I had three, three moves, uh, three rate increases in mind. Uh, and March increasingly was looking like it's the right time to do that. Uh, but the other thing that I've been very mindful of is that the economy has been a, a surprise to us and a surprise to the upside uh, repeatedly uh, in ways that has left me really just observing how the world works and keeping my options open so I can adapt my policy uh, to what the world tells me is happening. So I just think it's really important for people to know that we're not set or I'm not set on any particular set progression in terms of policy. And we're going to let the data and the evidence really guide us in terms of what an appropriate action might be. What happens if inflationary numbers actually come down faster than you expect? What would the policy implications be in that case? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because, you know, the data can go in one direction or it can go in the other direction. And I would expect that uh, for me, I would adjust my policy uh, to maybe not be as uh, uh, as aggressive in terms of raising interest rates uh, if, if it comes in and inflation responds very, very quickly. That's not what I'm expecting, because when I talk to business leaders, what they're telling me is that they've got some things priced in for the first half of this year that they're pretty sure they're still going to work out. Uh, and put into place. So I'm not expecting uh, inflation that's going to come uh, far, far below what I'm hoping will happen in the first half of the year. But if that happens, I think that'd be good news for all of us. And it would, it would give us some time to pause and, and see sort of how other parts of the economy are working.